Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. The Village of Ridgewood, Village Council, regular public meeting, June 9, 2021. The time is 8 o'clock p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a posting on the bulletin board of Village Hall, by mail to the Ridgewood News, the record, and by submission to all persons. Can't hear. Why? It's on. Can everybody hear me? Now we can. All right, I'm going to start. Is that better? Mm -hmm. I'll, okay. We'll start again. We're going to call this meeting to order, the regular public meeting of the Ridgewood Village Council, June 9th, 2021. The time is now 8.01 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a posting on the bulletin board in Village Hall, by mail to the Ridgewood News, the record, and by submission to all persons entitled to same, as provided by law of the schedule, including the date and time of this meeting. Roll call. Councilwoman Perrin. Here. Councilwoman Reynolds? Here. Deputy Mayor Seaton? Here. Councilwoman Walsh? Here. Mayor Newton? Here. Please join us for the flag salute. Please join us for a moment of silence for our men and women serving our nation, our first responders, and for our Dolores Tomei, who worked for the Ridgewood Fire Department Fire Prevention Bureau for the past 31 years. Dolores passed away unexpectedly this morning, um, just three weeks away from retirement. We will all miss Dolores terribly, and we'll all remember her fondly. Please share us and uh, share a moment of silence. Uh, for Dolores as well. Thank you. I move the bills, claims, and vouchers and statements of funds on hand as of May 31st, 2021 be accepted as submitted. Second. Perrin? I'll abstain. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Newton? Yes. I move that the Village Council minutes of February 3rd, 2021 and February 24th, 2021, having been reviewed by the Village Council and now available in the Village Clerk's Office, be approved as submitted. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes, this evening we'll start with a proclamation, Bee City USA and National Pollinator Week. Deputy Mayor Seaton. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas pollinator species, such as thousands of species of bees, are essential partners in producing much of our food supply, and whereas pollinator species provide significant environmental benefits that are necessary for maintaining healthy, diverse urban and suburban ecosystems, and whereas pollinator, pollination plays a vital role for the trees and plants of our community, enhancing our quality of life and creating recreational and economic development opportunities. And whereas for decades, the village of Ridgewood has managed urban landscapes and public lands that include many municipal parks and greenways, as well as wildlife habitats. And whereas the village of Ridgewood provides recommendations to developers and residents regarding landscaping to promote wise conservation stewardship including the protection of pollinators and maintenance of their habitats in urban and suburban environments. Now therefore be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood does hereby proclaim the third week of June as the Village of Ridgewood's observation of National Pollinator Week and the Village of Ridgewood as an aff affiliate of Bee City USA and urges all residents to recognize this observance. Thank you Deputy Mayor. Okay. With that we will move to public comment. Um, so will be a total of 40 minutes, not to exceed three minutes per person. Please, when you come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record clearly. If you're wearing a mes mask, just try and speak loudly so we pick up everything in the recording. Thank you. 
Is the microphone on? You're good. Okay, Bob Upton, 172 West Glen Avenue. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I hope I'm not in my comments to you recently coming across as confrontational. Uh, I want to emphasize, as I've said before, that uh, concerning the sidewalks on West Glen Avenue, I'm not opposed to them. I'm just concerned to understand the process by which they're going to be developed, uh, the plans developed and approved. Um, so I've been coming back because I'm unclear about what the process is going to be um, in both approving and executing the project. What happens next and what happens at the step after that, step by step. Um, and particularly, what's the uh, purpose of this resolution tonight, uh, which supposedly will approve the plans, but hopefully that's not th the final step. So that's, that's w merely what I've been uh, asking several times, to understand the process. Uh, I'd like to know if the residents are going to have a chance to present their views. Uh, will the village engineer, the council, the uh, CSAC be involved in that process? And uh, uh, will the residents present it all together? And will I, as an individual resident, have an opportunity to discuss the specific circumstances of my property before a decision is made? So that's my question. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, come on, Linda, come. Just right to the microphone, name and address for the record. What do, I, what do you want me to do? Just pull the microphone down, a name and address for the record. Scar Buff 569 Northern Parkway. I would like to address the last comment made about my statements made at the end of the council meeting on June 2nd, 2021. It was stated by the mayor, she did address my concerns and the decision was based on safety, which was stressed several times. The truth is the mayor did speak to me in March and early May and also May 27th, 2020 for one hour and 58 minutes. At no time did she address my clear statements supported by Oprah documents nor actual comment, council co statements that is not answering direct questions to prove to me a taxpayer that your plan was better to defund could, the low-paid EMTs. Could you just EMT speak into the microphone a little more? I'm sorry. Linda, Thanks. Linda. To defund the low-paid EMT and hire two paid firefighters that this would not hurt the community and safety, first responders, and taxes when a hiring freeze for firefighters would have been a better option. Why not? This is our tax money you'll be spending while removing first responders who have dedicated countless hours for four decades. The truth was stated that the mayor said at the last meeting this was due to safety. Also in two of the above calls, this was also reiterated in March and May. It was said to me, it's a personal issue was at hand. When I asked who was interviewed to prove the point, I was given no answer. The fact is, since I wanted to know the truth, I asked all of the EMT personally, as well as the coordinator, even in the past week. They truth truthfully told me there was one issue with one person two years ago in part because the signal was too weak. In 2019, the EMT requested funds to strengthen the signal, which was denied by the council at that time. So the EMT used their own funds to fix it. The fact is the one person who missed or was late for the call was discharged, and no other incident has occurred at all according to them. My question is why punish all of the per diem EMT for an incident which occurred two years ago? No answer is given. No mention is also made of the community service the EMT did for four decades, who will no longer do that. I wonder who will. The truth is this weekend was Pride Day and the July 4th is coming up as well. The EMT will be there with zero pay, standing in the hot sun, waiting to help people. This is how they are thanked for their dedication to help day and night for 40 years. I question, how do you face them? The truth is, this is a bad plan for Ridgewood, but it was already passed. Sadly, one we were not informed about, at least according to me and my supported documents, and one which many of us did not support. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, good evening, my name is Mahmoud Hamza. I live on uh, 528 Amsterdam Avenue. Um, please kindly accept this check of $2,000. It is a donation 
to the Parks and Recreation Department to plant more trees in Ridgewood. The proceeds came from our wonderful neighbors here in Ridgewood, our friends and members of the Muslim Society of Ridgewood. After my mother passed away due to COVID complication on December 23rd, we were approached by many who asked us of what they can do. We thought that the best way to remember my mother is by planting more trees in Ridgewood. After all, she loved Ridgewood and she always marveled about its beautiful trees. We are asking for one tree to be planted next to my father's tree with a plaque comm commemorating her. This is nearby the village hall. There's a tree already planted there. There's already an empty well we checked. The remainder of the money is to be used to plant trees in our village business district. I've already submitted the necessary paperwork to the director of the Parks and Recreation Department. We do trust our Parks and Recreation Department and especially De uh, Declan for choosing the right and appropriate trees. We will be working with Dina, a wonderful person to work with, on what to be written on the plaque. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those who, con who kindly contributed to this fund. Thank you. Your support under this dire situation is really very, very appreciated. You were like our extended family. It was hard, and you helped us to go through it. Thank you. Okay, so this Mom, is the check. Just go on over, and, and thank you, Mahmoud. This is um, a beautiful gift and a beautiful tribute to your mom. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Louis Delicati. I live at 959 Barnes Drive. I need you to speak into the yeah, microphone. Just into the Louis microphone. Delicati, 959 Barnes Drive. We humans are a social species. We are drawn together by commonalities and have been ever since we began independent locomotion, walking. Early commonalities that drew us together was things such as a stream or a river for water, a cave in which to sleep safely while others kept watch for predators, fire for warmth, etc. As we developed the early basic technologies needed for survival, such as hunting, farming, and fishing, we formed communities around these commonalities. There's an old saying, you can't fight Mother Nature. Humans being social is very natural. There's another old saying, nature abhors a vacuum. Simple example, does anybody in this room have an empty closet in their house completely empty? I doubt it. That would be a vacuum. I discovered a new commonality right here in the village quite by happenstance about two years ago. At this place, I met people whose homes I have driven past for 30 years since I moved here in 89. I never knew these people because we had no commonality. But now that we do, we've become friends. This commonality is so popular and widespread that there's a group inside an app that as of today has over 300 members. This group didn't exist two years ago just humans being. Now everyone in the community gives a little of themselves to the community. Some give time, some give talent, some give treasure. Of course, every community has a few members that are a little stingy, they don't want to give. And the community is diminished by these members. When a child is small, third item, when a child is small, a parent can say, because I said so. Well, that's not really a reason. A small child can't object though, because they can't think like adults. As children get older, however, because I said so wears thin, eventually fails, makes the parents look foolish, and the children become rebellious. The parents must give a real fact-based reason for every decision they make. Children, especially teenagers, may disagree, but they may ultimately respect the decision if it's based on objective facts. Now to draw these concepts together. Right now there's a condition here in Ridgewood that is diametrically opposed to human natural social interaction it's a vacuum just waiting to be filled and exists because it has been forced into place by the powers that be and the reason given is not fact-based, it's because I said so. The council can either correct this condition or knows who can and direct that person or persons to correct it. I strongly urge the council to find a way to set things right by allowing Ridgewood seniors such as myself to enjoy what little time we have left to do the things that we can still do while we can still do them. All we want is to be able to play pickleball at Glen School Courts on the same schedule as is now head by the tennis courts. 
Let Mother Nature close the courts on her schedule. When it's 80 degrees at 8 a.m. in the summer, no one's going to play. When it's raining, no one's going to play. The courts will be empty. Please allow nature and society to prevail. Don't be unduly influenced by, the, by what is literally less than a handful of stingies. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, council members. I am reading this letter for, from Jean Solomon, who lives on 648 Spring Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey, and when I was unable to attend tonight. And this is what she says. Dear village council members, I was very disappointed that at last week's council meeting, a multitude of letters written by concerned residents were summarized and not read in full. This is especially disheartening because the time for public comments at the beginning and end of the meeting was not used to its fullest extent. Although Ms. Jackson made a Herculean effort to give a summary of all the points in those letters, it was an impossible task. Each letter represented the individual voice of the author. It felt extremely disrespectful to and dismissive to those Ridgewood residents who took their time to express their views. These citizens deserved better. That night, Nancy Bigos, director of the Ridgewood Parks and Recreation Department, made the recommendation for full restoration of the hours to align with those of tennis. She based this on her experience, the practical implementation of the plan, and her thorough understanding of the situation. To ignore her recommendation and restart a discussion at this time, which had been dismissed in January about alternate locations, derailed the specific talks about the play at Glen. Looking for alternate sites is a topic for another time. Those discussions deserve thoughtful considerations of the ramifications of creating pickleball courts on other sites. I am hoping at the meeting of June 9th that the recommendation of Nancy Bigos, Director of Parks and Recreation, is accepted as submitted and we can finally put this issue to rest. Respectfully, Jean Solomon, 648 Spring Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey. Thank you. Yes, with no other public comment, we will close public comment and go on. Well, actually, just let me finish a couple things. Um, village manager, so can you and maybe Councilwoman Reynolds get Bob Upton because he has the concern about the Glen? Can we kind of just work together to get the information he needs and work with um, that issue so we get that resolved? I think that sure, makes the most sense. That. And, yes. um, okay, good. Let me just say, okay. All right. Uh, with that, we'll go to the village manager's report. I have a very brief report tonight. I just want to remind everyone that our next council meetings are on June 23rd and then um, July 7th and July 14th. That's all I have. This is like a first. That's like pretty crazy. Um, Councilwoman Perrin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Green Ridgewood met last week and mostly, well, we, we meet jointly with green, the green team. And so most of our meeting was taken up with sustainable Jersey certification. And I'm going to leave that to Councilman uh, Seaton. We also have the Arts Amble coming up on this Friday at 5 o'clock on the Dunham Trail entering by Spring Street near the bridge uh, that is sponsored by Green Ridgewood and um, the Bergen Arts Council, I believe. And uh, that will end up at uh, the James Rose House where they are having what, what they're calling an earth exhibit. It is free, by the way, the um, Arts Amble. Um, the Chamber of Commerce met this morning. We had the installation breakfast uh, downtown and the mayor swore in the new board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce. 
and uh, the director of the Chamber of Commerce also gave out what they called above and beyond awards to the whole team that worked on the uh, Feed the Front Lines initiative, which was, as I've said before, a stupendous effort. Um, and the team included uh, Jen Williams, Jeannie Johnson, Stacey Antine, Paul Baggianos, Ramon Hache, uh, our commissioner, um, Scott Leaf, Karen Hughes, Gail Gezi, and Joan Groom. Um, and uh, perhaps the council might consider doing a proclamation as well uh, to, to recognize the founders of that, that um, initiative, the administrative volunteers, the restaurants, the drivers, and the distributors. Um, and I also wanted to mention that uh, Saturday, June 19th is Juneteenth and uh, that is uh, a new state holiday that Governor Murphy instituted last year and there's going to be an, observa an observance of that holiday at Overpeck Park. The county is sponsoring it. That's Saturday, June 19th between 12 and 6 and uh, there is also another observance in Mawa uh, on the same day at 11 to 1 o'clock at the Commodore Perry Fields in Mawa. That's all I have. That's great. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reynolds? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I haven't had any committee meetings in the last week, but I just wanted to say I attended two events in the past week. One was on Saturday, the Pride celebration. I just wanted to say it was a, a great day. And I want to thank everybody that was involved in putting it together. It was, it was a great, great celebration. And then yesterday, we celebrated at Graydon Pool, uh, Ridgewood Water's 100 year anniversary. And that was great. The, the pool looks beautiful. If anybody hasn't been to Graydon yet, you should go there. It, it looks crystal clear. It's gorgeous. But I also want to thank uh, Rich Calby and Ridgewood Water. I've lived here for 31 years, and I really have to say that since Rich has been on in the last, I believe it's six years, he has really uh, done so many positive things for Ridgewood Water, and I believe he will continue to do so, and it, it's a really great, great company. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Walsh? So um, I, too, don't have much to report. Um, we have our Board of Ed meeting on Friday. Parks and Rec is next week. Um, but I will also mention that we were at the senior picnic at Graydon on Saturday. The weather was actually a little too hot, I'll say. <laughs> uh, but a great time was had by all. We really had a great time seeing people that we haven't seen in a while because we've all been COVID uh, compliant, so it was really nice uh, to get out and see everybody. Uh, and then also the Pride event was spectacular. I think it was, it was probably the, the best it's been, so thank you. And it was fun to see seniors out there dancing. Yes, they were dancing, was. even and in the heat, they were music. dancing, yeah. so it was fun. Deputy Mayor. Well, thank you, Mayor. So uh, I'll talk about the Sustainable Jer uh, Jersey application. It has been successfully submitted Sunday evening, I believe. So Ridgewood's currently certified at a silver level through Sustainable Jersey, and um, we have enough uh, actions and um, compliant priority actions and uh, different requirements that they, um, they ask to be certified again at a silver level. Uh, we have three priority actions, uh, one requirement, which is to have a green team, so that's an easy one because it's a very functioning green team. It's very active, and I'd like to thank them for all the help that they, uh, they did to um, put this together. And we submitted 460 points, I believe, and the threshold is 350. So we might not get all those points, but we should definitely get enough for, uh, to be over 350. And um, I think after the uh, first round of comments, we should be well on our way to being recertified as a silver certified town in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I think last time I checked, there were 49 towns uh, in the entire state, and uh, we were one of them. So thank you again to the green team and everyone who helped uh, submit information and village staff and the manager and everybody who uh, helped gather everything up and pull it all together. It was a, a really big effort and um, 
we should be successful at maintaining our silver certification. So that's what I have. Thank you. Thank you, and I just want to say that the deputy mayor left everything early, well, not early, but you went home Saturday to just work on that whole thing for the weekend, so it was a monumental effort on his part, so a debt of appreciation and gratitude. Um, I also just want to point out that um, the arts amble ending at the James Rose House for the free program, uh, folks can add an additional $10. It's on sale. $10 for tickets to um, have a tour of the James Rose House. That's on the invitation. So if you go on a drop down menu, you can attend the Arts Amble and it's the um, uh, Earth program for free, but you can also pay the extra $10, which is a, a good deal. And the James Rose House is just amazing. Um, so the Ridgewood Public Library hosted the annual ESL event virtually. Um, the amazing afternoon included tutors and students committed to working together to learn English in what can be for some a new and daunting experience. Each of the students used their new language skills to share poetry, art, calligraphy, jewelry making, music, and more. For many, um, for many, let's just see what's going on here. Hang on. Technical, okay. Um, for many, the Ridgewood uh, Public Library ESL program provides an opportunity to learn while forging new lifelong friendships. Uh, special thanks to the two Victorias, Victoria Hilditch, who is the coordinator, and Victoria Schnorr for their dedication and commitment to the library ESL program, Nancy Green and the library staff, Gail Campbell and the Board of Trustees, and both the Friends and the Foundation for their support, and most importantly, to all the tutors and the students. For everyone to know, this is uh, the data, the statistics on this year's 2021 ESL program included 78 students from 18 countries speaking 14 uh, different native languages. And um, I just want to say that I have a little note card here. I, I clairvoyantly, I know what's in it. Uh, this is a thank you note to the Ridgewood Village Council. Uh, the Village of Ridgewood for the ongoing support for all the programs at the Ridgewood Public Library. Uh, without the support of the Ridgewood Village Council, these programs could not happen. And um, I was also given this little nice, beautiful bag, which is to support our ESL program. Um, if anyone's interested in ever becoming an ESL tutor, please feel free to email me and I will get all the information you need to make certain that you get connected with the library folks. Otherwise, you could just go right over to the library and ask about that. Monday evening, the Library Board of Trustees participated in a library law program presented by attorney Douglas Zucker. Mr. Zucker offered um, trustees information pertaining to library law, including confidentiality regulations, along with a review of both OPRA and OPMA. Um, library Board of Trustees are, are required to follow certain rules, just as this village council is required to do. The presentation was both informative and somewhat entertaining. It was uh, kind of a, a fun way to learn the law. And uh, trustees had an opportunity to ask questions, comment, and, and uh, the attorney gave a lot of his time, Mr. Zucker, so we really appreciated that. We have a, a little slide presentation. He's just cleaning up and he's going to be sending it to us. I think it's valuable for village council members also to take a look at it. It's extremely informative and, and extremely applicable to um, our role here on the governing body. Uh, I agree the Pride celebration was absolutely uh, fantastic Saturday at Memorial Park at Van Ness Square. Um, it was actually an opportunity for our own village residents to share their personal experiences, also members of the LGBTQ community. Uh, I just want to thank all the speakers and all who helped uh, the village with planning and organizing of the event. I especially want to thank our village manager, CFO Bob Bruni, Ridgewood Traffic and Signal. They were out there in the heat setting up the chairs, um, making sure the flag was tied up, making sure that everything was in place, getting the, the microphone and all the uh, audio equipment. It was sweltering, so it was a, uh, a big lean in, and we really appreciate that and to the uh, Ridgewood Police Department. They were there on hand as well, so it was wonderful. Uh, Ridgewood Health Department Director Dawn Strullo and I participated in a mayor's wellness campaign meeting with Julie D. Simone, program officer for the New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute. Uh, the meeting was organized as an opportunity to kind of take a look back of the year COVID review and how the um, mayor's wellness campaign was implemented. And for Ridgewood, we primarily did that virtually, um, which is our annual weight loss challenge. Um, this was also a t an opportunity to take a look back um, on the year's efforts during a pandemic, but also where we go from here post-COVID uh, to try to understand 
what those uh, wellness needs are, which include some uh, mental health issues. Uh, it was specifically targeted towards youngsters, school-age children, uh, getting people back up and out the door and, and back into the world. Um, really an opportunity to encourage everyone to resume activities. Uh, the village did receive, um, we were excited uh, a couple months ago to receive $1,000 from the Mayor's Wellness Campaign. We have earmarked that, those funds uh, for organizing a web app-based weight loss program. Uh, I think we're going to be working on that soon and hopefully get it up and running. So that's um, an exciting opportunity for anyone who's interested in participating in that. And this morning, as uh, Councilwoman Perrin pointed out, uh, I did have the opportunity to administer the oath of office to the new chamber board uh, president, Gary Colsair, of the Ridgewood Tobacco Shop. Um, a very early breakfast was held on the Piccolo Bistro patio, followed by the ceremony. I just want to point out that outgoing uh, President Scott Leaf was at the helm throughout the pandemic. Um, he worked tirelessly to help our central business district survive the uh, difficult year. His leadership, his enthusiasm, his boundless energy and positivity gave many, many business owners, and I would dare say even village council members, uh, a lot of hope and encouragement. So we just want to say thank you to Scott. It was a tough year. It was tough to be at the helm uh, during this time. And we wish all the best of luck to the new chamber members and to the new president. And with that, we will continue. Well, thank you. OK, we'll move on to ordinances for Ridgewood Water. There are no introductions. Um, I just want to remind all council members, please speak into the microphone, because it's not quite getting picked up. Um, so uh, we have public hearing on ordinance number 3861. So um, Heather, I'm just having a really hard time hearing. I don't know if it's because of these. Yes, me too. I'm hearing, I don't know what it, I, because I think just the way the audio is bouncing, I can't hear. So, okay. Okay. so are we on, um, I'm sorry? Wow. You're set, do you hear everything? Yeah, I think it's these, I think it's the partition. It may be. Okay. You need to speak into the microphones. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, we have no Ridgewood Water Ordinances, right? We have public hearing, 3861. Oh, I'm, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, here we go. I move the clerk read ordinance 3861 by title on second reading of the public hearing thereon be open. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of ordinance 3861? An ordinance to amend chapter 145 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Fees at section 145 6, enumeration of fees relating to code chapters. Due to the fact that this ordinance's publication indicated that would have had a public hearing via Zoom, which is not the case, the public hearing on Ordinance 3861 will be continued to a special public meeting to be held on June 23, 2021, beginning at 7.30 p.m. The public hearing for Ordinance 3861 was advertised for this evening's meeting, so anyone wishing to comment on this ordinance may do so at this time or wait until the June 23rd special public meeting to comment. The public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing on Ordinance 3861 be continued to June 23rd, 2021. I second the motion. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds. Sorry. <laughs> Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. <laughs> Richard Water Resolutions, the following resolutions, number 21-145 through 21-151 are to be considered by a consent agenda with one vote by the Village Council. They will be read by title only. Award contract, SCADA server software configuration and license. Award contract under state contract, 2022 Ford F-350, super cab truck body. Award contract under state contract, chassis for F Ford F-350 super cab truck. Award contract under source well cooperative purchasing system, mini hydraulic excavator. Award contract under source well cooperative purchasing system, Tomaster T-20 trailer. Award professional services contract, 
engineering services for PFAS treatment at Carr Linwood facility and authorize execution of easement agreement for 897 Best Court. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3863. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3863 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 145 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Fees at Section 145-6, enumeration of fees relating to code chapters. I move that Ordinance 3863 be adopted on first reading and that July 14, 2021, be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3864. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read Ordinance 3864 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood, Vehicles and Traffic, at Section 265-59, Schedule 9, Stop Intersections. I move that Ordinance 3864 be adopted on first reading and that July 14, 2021, be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3865. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered. Will the clerk please read Ordinance 3865 by title? An ordinance by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood amending the Village Code to repeal Chapter 154, Flood Damage Prevention in its entirety, and to adopt a new Chapter 154, floodplain management regulations to adopt flood hazard maps to designate a floodplain administrator and providing for severability and an effective date. I move that Ordinance 3865 be adopted on first reading and that July 14, 2021 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3866. Second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3866 by title? An ordinance to amend salary ordinance 3608, fixing the salaries, wages, and other compensation for white collar employees and to amend salary ordinance 3830, fixing salaries, wages, and other compensation and to establish the employee agreement of certain non-union officers and employees of the village of Ridgewood, County of Bergen and state of New Jersey. I move that ordinance 3866 be adopted on first reading and that June 23rd, 2021 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read Ordinance 3862 by title on second reading and that the public thereon be open. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of Ordinance 3862? An ordinance prohibiting the operation of any class of cannabis businesses within its geographical boundaries and amending Article 4, Section 244-13, Tobacco, Cannabis, and Electronic Vapor Substance Inhalation Shops of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood. Due to the fact that this ordinance's publication indicated that would it have a public hearing via Zoom, which is not the case, the public hearing on Ordinance 3862 will be continued to a special public meeting to be held on June 23, 2021, beginning at 7.30 p.m. The public hearing for Ordinance 3862 was advertised for this evening's meeting, so anyone wishing to comment on this ordinance may do so at this time or wait until June 23rd special public meeting to comment. The public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing on Ordinance 3862 be continued to June 23rd, 2021. Second. Perrin? 
Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. The following resolutions, number 21-152 through 21-192, with the exception of re resolutions number 21-177, which was moved off of the consent agenda, and resolutions 21-186 and 21-187, which were removed from the agenda, are to be adopted by a consent agenda with one vote by the Village Council. There will be read by title only. Award contract, Masonry Repairs, 1057 Hillcrest Road. Award contract under National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance contract, cameras for Hudson Street Garage. Title 59 approval, West Glen Avenue Safety Improvements. Award contract under state contract, 2022 Ford F-350 Super Cab Truck and Utility Body, Parks and Shade Tree. Award contract under state contract, 2021 Ford Expedition, Parks and Recreation. Award contract under state contract 2022 Ford F-350 Super Cab Truck and Utility Body Streets. Award contract under state contract 2022 Ford F-350 Super Cab Truck and Utility Body Fleet Services. Award contract under state contract Body Worn Cameras Police Department. Award contract under National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance Air Filter Units for Village Hall. Award contract under Source Well Cooperative Purchasing Program Plow, Quad Blade, and HD Snow Deflector, Parks and Shade Tree. Award contract under Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Program, Plow, Quad Blade, and HD Snow Deflector Streets. Award contract under Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Program, Plow, Quad, quad Blade, and HD Snow Deflector Fleet Services. Award contract under Sourcewell National Cooperative Purchasing Agreement, Rubber Tire Front End Loader, Water Pollution Control Facility. Award contract under Educational Services Commission of New Jersey Cooperative Pricing System, Replacement Vehicle Lifts at Lower Garage, Fleet Services Division. Award contract under Houston Galveston Area Council Purchasing Contract, Mini Sweeper Solid Waste. Award contract under Source Well Cooperative Purchasing Program, 2021 Leach Rear Loader Packer Truck Recycling. Award contract under Educational Services Commission of New Jersey Cooperative Pricing System, Single Operator Leaf Vacuum Truck, Streets. Award professional services contract, update open space plan, open space priority needs and prior prioritization study, and environmental resources inventory. Authorize additional funding for special needs housing, the Enclave. Authorize release of performance surety bond and cash guarantees, Ridgewood Dayton, 100-152 South Broad Street. Recognize name change for licensed site remediation professional. Endorse affordable housing plan. Authorize settlement agreement, Panchera versus Village of Ridgewood. Authorize person-to-person -person transfer of liquor license. King Supermarkets, Inc. to Ridgewood Food, LLC, trading as Greenway Markets. Approve 2021 to 2022 renewals of liquor licenses. Um, 177 was moved off of the consent agenda. Appoint village bond attorney. Appoint village labor attorney. Appoint professional planner. Appoint professional affordable housing planner and related matters. Appoint village prosecutor and assistant village prosecutor. Appoint municipal public defender and alternate mis municipal public defender. Appoint community development representative. Appoint representative to Open Space Trust Regional Committee. 186 and 187 were removed from the agenda. Appoint member to Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Board. Appoint members to Ridgewood Community Center Advisory Board. Appoint members to the Ridgewood Arts Council. Appoint member to the Central Business District Advisory Committee. And appoint village council members as liaisons to various boards and committees. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. The next item is 21-177. Whereas the Village of Ridgewood has a need to acquire the professional services of a village attorney as a non-fair and open contract pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 19-44A-20.4. And whereas the Chief Financial Officer has determined and certified in writing the value of the professional service will exceed $17,500. And whereas the anticipated term of this contract is from July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. 
and whereas Matthew Rogers, Esquire of the Law Offices of Matthew S. Rogers, LLC, 123 po Prospect Street, Ridgewood, New Jersey, will provide the professional services of village attorney for the village of Ridgewood at the annual rate of $185,000, and such funds are available in account number 1-01-20-712-026. And whereas Matthew Rogers Esquire and the law offices of Matthew S. Rogers LLC have submitted business entity disclosure certifications which certify that Matthew Rogers Esquire and the law offices of Matthew Rogers S. Rogers LLC have not made any reportable con contributions to a political or candidate committee in the village of Ridgewood in the previous one year and that the contract will prohibit Matthew Rogers Esquire and the law offices of Matthew S. Rogers LLC from making any reportable contributions through the term of the contract. Now therefore be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood authorize and directs the Mayor and Village Clerk to enter into and execute a contract with Matthew Rogers Esquire and the Law Offices of Matthew S. Rogers LLC and that a notice of this action shall be printed once in the Ridgewood News pursuant to the local public contracts law as set forth in NJSA 40A colon 11-1 at SEC and be it further resolved that the Chief Financial Officer has certified that funds are available for 2021 services as noted below and contingent upon the Village Council appropriating such in the temporary budget for the year 2022 and subsequently adopting a 2022 budget to fund the full amount of the contract as it applies to its 2022 services. And be it finally resolved that the Business Disclosure Entity Certification and the Determination of value be placed on file with this resolution. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? So I'm just going to make a comment. Um, I think Matt's a wonderful attorney, has done wonderful things for the village. But um, I'm objecting to the change that was made in uh, this, this way that we're now going to be paying for Matt's services and the information that is going to be coming to the council. Many people remember in past years that I found some things um, that my fellow council members were doing by looking at Matt's bills and I find that information to be very informative. So the fact that we are not going to have that now unless we request it, I find to be um, not an easy way for council members, certainly, and now the public to be able to search things um, that are public information. So I'm voting yes for Matt because I think he's great, but I'm objecting to the, the new process that's been put in place. Thank you. And Newton. Oh, did you call my name? I did. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't hear. So I actually, you know, I, I want to comment on Councilman Walsh's comments because I acknowledge that her due diligence in those documents uh, revealed um, information that, that was concerning to her. And this predates, I think, everybody it's here. It's ago. a long time ago. Uh, but I, I think this is a move in the right direction. Uh, I think Matt has been um, an outstanding uh, village attorney. Um, I, I appreciate what Councilman Walsh is saying, but I think this is the best direction for the village to go in. And it, it actually allows, um, in all likelihood, um, greater access to um, Matt, where in the past there may have been some hesitation maybe to pursue legal advice because typically the clock is ticking. So I think this is a much better opportunity to make certain that that people are comfortable contacting our, our village attorney and, and seeking appropriate legal counsel. So, yes. Okay. Um, the next one is uh, Resolution 21-193. Whereas the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood adopted Ordinance Number 3853, which established regulations and hours days permitted for playing pickleball at the Glen Pickleball Courts. And whereas the hours days permitted were a starting point and now that the hours of daylight have increased and the weather has become warmer, it is necessary to adjust the hours days of play at the Glen Pickleball Courts so that pickleball players will have the opportunity to play when it is cooler in the morning as well as later into the evening hours. 
And whereas the village council wishes to adjust the hours days permitted for playing pickleball at the Glen Pickleball Courts in an expeditious manner so that pickleball players have an opportunity to play during the warmer summer months. And whereas the village council also wishes to allow pickleball play to take place more often and will do so by retrofitting tennis courts at the Bel Air Tennis Courts to be used as a pickleball court. And whereas the village council must also take into account the neighbors living near the pickleball courts and allow them some hours during each day the pickleball is not being played so that they may open their windows in their homes and enjoy their backyards without the sound of pickleball play taking place. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood that in order for there to be a compromise for the competing interests of both the pickleball players and the neighbors, the hours days of pickleball play in Ordinance Number 3853 shall be relaxed for the next 60 days, and pickleball play shall specifically adhere to the following schedule. Pickleball at the Glen Pickleball Court shall be permitted as follows, Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There shall be no pickleball play at the Glen Pickleball Courts on Monday and Friday, and be it further resolved that pickleball play at the Bel Air Tennis Courts, which will be retrofitted to allow for pickleball play, shall only be permitted on Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And be it finally resolved that the village professional staff shall monitor the pickleball play at the Glen and Bel Air Courts over the 60-day period and provide the village council with a report of their observations and recommendations as to how to proceed after the 60-day period has expired. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Perrin? Well, may I ask for a clarification first before I give my thoughts? Sure. Um, how many tennis courts will at Bel Air will be converted to um, to pickleball, and how many pickleball courts will be created? So it's a, I, I believe it's three pickleball courts will be created, but it's actually nothing. There's nothing. No convert. You're not converting a tennis court into a pickleball court. You're creating an overlay, and I think one of our residents was um, uh, a pickleball player. Actually, we have to. I, I don't know if she's here. I don't know. I don't recognize the faces. Um, but she actually gave us an incredible amount of information and uh, a plan for the appropriate way to add the line. So what happens, Pam, is if people are that people can be playing either or. So you're not losing tennis courts. You're just gaining an option. Um, and I think it's um, a good option. Um, okay. When this controversy first arose uh, in 2019, the neighbors came before the council and they were saying that the sound of the pickleball was constant and was driving them to distraction. Council this year issued no badges to non-residents thereby reducing the players by, I think the director of Parks and Rec said, 173 badge holders. Recently, when I've gone to the pickleball courts at Glen various times of day and, and um, various days, there are no players on the courts. So I think we have succeeded in giving the neighbors some respite. Um, and I can see that starting play at 11 o'clock on a summer Sunday could be very hot. I'm not entirely convinced that this schedule will work out on a permanent basis. Um, therefore, I'm glad to see that this is a 60-day trial period. And for that reason, I vote yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? So I just want to add to um, Councilwoman Perrin's comments. Um, I think the placement of the pickleball courts um, is, is just unfortunate and not appropriate. The pickleball courts are one foot off the property line of um, our residents, one of our residents, and very close to the other neighbors. 
and the traveling of the noise and the constant of the noise, and I agree that there's been some, some break from that, um, but it has really very much impacted um, the way people use their homes, the way they use their backyards, the way they open their windows in the summer. Um, some of the neighbors that are grappling with this, um, one in particular has a youngster at, at uh, Hawes School, I believe it is. Uh, it is Hawes School. Um, it, it's very difficult, and, and I think that um, it's so, I think it's so hard, especially for the council members that were on council when we approved the pickleball courts, because we thought we were really, really doing this fabulous thing. And I you know Councilwoman Walsh is shaking her head, and I know the deputy mayor is shaking his head. We were so excited. We thought we were doing something super positive for our community. And, and it, it turned out that we hurt some people. And, and I, I think that we really grapple with that. So we're trying to find the positive and strike the balance, and we're very hopeful that the, um, as we work toward the Bel Air courts, that that will give additional play time and, um, you know, kind of a shared burden. So in any event, yes. Thank you. All right. And with that, we will go back to comments from the public. Not to exceed five minutes this time per person. Good evening. Hi, I'm Lillian Blood. I live at 250 North Maple. I've written to all of you many, many times. Just, could, Lillian, could, could you me? just could you just lean in a little to that? I can. It's very hard. Is that to better? Hear. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm Lillian Blood. I live at 250 North Maple. I've lived in town for over 50 years. I played pickleball and I played tennis. I will tell you that the pickleball noise that the neighbors are complaining about cannot be heard by their neighbors, by their things. I've been there. Judy Mack, she used the, pick, the tennis courts when they were tennis courts at Bel Air, at, I'm sorry, at tennis courts at Glen. She used those tennis courts to give private lessons. She is disturbed because she can't give lessons there any longer. Gail Howard, who lives across from the soccer field, I've been to her house. She cannot hear the pickleball noise or sound, whatever you want to call it. Pickleball has, go ahead. Lillian, I'm sorry. I'm just going to ask. Those folks aren't here, and I, I just think that the residents aren't here, and so if you could just keep your comments more general. I, I, you can say what you want. It's you know free. What, Susan, I, I agree. They're not here, and I would love for them to be here. We would love to meet with them because we have not been able to get there. You have letters from many, many residents about playing pickleball there. We have residents who live there who do not complain. We did a public open house, so to speak, at the pickleball courts, and we had the neighbors come and play. They, they were ecstatic to learn how to play the game. Michael Corot, who lives right next to the pickleball courts, does not have a complaint. The, um, Diane Setter, who lives on the other side, uh, does not have a complaint. There's other people, Daisy, um, I'm forgetting her last name, Latham, um, does not have a problem. There's other neighbors. You have three neighbors, as far as I know, who have complained, and you have 50 people who aren't playing and because it's too hot. You know what we play? We play up at Wyckoff. We play at Montvale. We go to Glen Rock. Glen Rock has a big sign welcoming us, and they just put two more pickleball courts in. We don't use our beautiful courts over here that we spent $50,000 to, to do. And, and I don't see why. I wish that you could just go over there during the day and see there's no one there playing. And, and we, it's just very, very frustrating because it seems very arbitrary on your part to say tennis people can play, but pickleball people cannot because there's three neighbors who have complained. And I'm just really very, very disgusted. Most. And, and I've been in town for a long time. I, I worked to save Graden Pool, to be Graden Pool. I was instrumental on in beginning of the recycling in town. I've done lots of things in town that I'm very proud of. But this pickleball thing is really very upsetting to me because, and you can tell by my voice, I am very upset. It's nice to see you guys in person, not just on the screen. However, I will tell you, the voices sound better on the screen. We can hear you better. But maybe, like, if I move forward or back, 
you can't hear me. But again, give it some more thought. I mean, what, what harm is there if you play for one month, just allow us to play the same hours as tennis? What harm can be done? At the end of the month, you could say, oh, wow, the neighbors complained. They really didn't get any sleep. They didn't get any time to play. I've spoken to Gail Howard many a time. I said, come in and sit down with us. Learn about the game. But she said, oh, I'm not going to change my ways. And I said, well, use white music, white sound to, you know, block it out for you. I mean, I don't want people to be unhappy, you know, with sound. But, I, you know, I've lived in town for a long time, and I've worked with other mayors and other people in town on the council. Betty Wiest is my neighbor, and Quentin and she both have been on the council. I just I don't understand why you can't give one month of the same hours as tennis and give us an opportunity to show you that with less people playing, with more time for us to play in the earlier time of the day, not the heat of the day, those courts will be better used. Because at now, they're not being used. And, and again, my husband and I both go up to Wyckoff or to Montvale and play. And it's fun. I mean, we have many of our people that we used to play with at Glen are up there playing. But anyway. You've heard me, and, and I'm glad you have. But, but it is very, very disappointing. And again, it's interesting to be in a room that's so different than it used to be when I came. I was here when Gus Casper, none of you probably know Gus Casper, do you? Nope. Wilbur Edwards, nope, nope. Other, you, you do. Yep, you've been around as long as I have. Okay, so you've heard what I've had to say. And I really, I know you just passed this resolution, but if you have a private session afterwards, and you can think, hey, maybe Lillian is right. Maybe we'll give it a try. Go ahead and do it. I would not hold you to your previous vote. <laughs> don't, don't, talk till, don't talk till you get the microphone. Pickleball players. Name and address for the record. We've made all the concessions. Name and address for the record. They, can you oh, just Drew please? and Rodney, 125 <laughs> Maple Avenue, Ridgewood. I've lived here for over 30 years, and I love it because as a grown-up, growing up, I had no sports. This has been fa fabulous, and as uh, Lillian has said, we've met so many wonderful, wonderful people. What bothers me, a lot bothers me, but what I see is that the pickleball players have made all the concessions. Our hours have been cut. We put up sound screens. We're using muted balls. We're using muted tennis racket, paddle balls, rather. And we've got ridiculous hours. Someone from told me that the other day, a Sunday, they had to go over. And our courts are locked. And I want to ask you, and I'd like you to, because someone has told me this, and it's, it's not my, I've seen it. We have badges that we have to wear. We had a monitor, like we were in kindergarten. Do you check the tennis players? Do they have badges? I mean, I've never done this. I don't play tennis. But someone said on Sundays, the Ridgewood High School tennis courts are monopolized by people from Fairlawn. Have you checked that? So but, but let's not get off the point. The point is, pickleball players have made all the concessions. All the concessions. I think that to you know, uh, re uh, eliminate outside players, I understand. I have other uh, ideas about that, but I think we have made all the concessions, and I think we deserve the same concessions. I think to play, I played the other day, Sunday. We couldn't play. We played two games. It was too hot. So to start us playing at 10 o'clock in the summer is ridiculous. We in the middle of the afternoon, not being respected. And uh, Lillian and myself and almost all of us who play there have been res Richard residents for 30 years. So I would just ask you to be a little respectful of us and ask maybe the neighbors, <laughs> and I'm going to re repeat what Lillian said. You know, we walked over to this Gail who is like walking past us all the time. From her house, you cannot hear pickleball. So I don't know what her, her obsession with it is. But I ask you, to really think about what we've done and what we deserve. Thank you. All right, anyone else? I'm gonna close public comment and um, 
I just wanted to share that the reason we did this by resolution this evening as opposed to ordinance was it would allow us to kind of modify moving forward a little bit more easily as we're looking at the Bel Air. So we hear what you're saying and appreciate that, um, but we did do this a little bit differently so we could um, be a little bit more flexible. So, yeah. Okay, just, just real quick, Lily, go ahead. If you, if you don't play pickleball, you don't understand exactly how it is. I know you play tennis. Yeah. So tennis, you go in either two or, you know, singles or doubles, and you, and you play for an hour. In pickleball, you're going in, you play for 15, 20 minutes. You play to 11 points, and, and then you're off. And when you're putting courts over at Bel Air, what happens there is that the people, when we look and we say, who's going to play where, we want to play with people that we want to play with. Playing at Bel Air, first of all, the courts are not made yet. I mean, I know. But, but basically, you want a group that you want to play with, and you rotate in and out. The winners stay on. They split. The other people come in. It's a very short game. It goes in and out and in and out. It's not a game like tennis. <clears throat> and I played on the Ridgewood tennis team. I, I traveled around to the different towns playing tennis. So I know how tennis is played. Pickleball is not played that way. I'm 80, almost 81 years old. I love playing pickleball. I've made friends playing pickleball. And we are a big group that enjoy being together. We don't have to have 100 people there, but we do need to have you know, 20 people or so. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that opening Bel Air is nice, but it's not the answer. Having better hours for, for Glenn is much better. Okay. That's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Um, with that, we're going to close public comment, and we will take a resolution. I just want to actually, I'm going to close this meeting before we close the meeting. I'm just going to say thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. This is our first live meeting, um, and, and we're happy that you all showed up, and we're happy to hear your public comment and, and have you here with us. We're actually, I think, all so happy to be here. Um, you know, the Zoom thing. Uh, although our voices were um, a little bit better, clearer, I'm, I'm trying actually talking very loud. I'm usually very soft-spoken. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone for being here tonight, and thank you to council colleagues and village staff. Um, we're here, we're back, and, and hopefully everyone stays safe and stays healthy. Uh, resolution to go into closed session. Be resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood that the Village Council meet in closed session on June 9th, 2021 at 8 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter on the agenda can be reached. And that that closed session be held in the caucus room of the Ridgewood Village Hall, 131 North Maple Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey. And be further resolved that the matters to be discussed in closed session are limited to legal matters to include the town garage and personnel matters to include boards and committees. These matters are allowable under NJSA 10 column 4 12 at SEC. And be further resolved that the minutes of this meeting shall be made available to the general public when such matters have been deemed completed by resolution of the Village Council. May I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. But you see, you think you would be willing to do it? Do we have a garbage can?